Well, I'm, I'm going to take you to the other end of the, the social, the medieval social spectrum, and and uh, ask whether elemental theory can help us to reinterpret um, familiar buildings. And this must be one of the the most iconic of the medieval buildings of of England, Bodium Castle in Sussex. Uh, whose function has, of course, been uh, debated and contested um, for decades. Is this a real functioning uh, military stronghold, uh, or is it a, a conceit? Is it a uh, the dream house uh, of an old soldier? <clears throat> well, those who, um, who think about, about, about Bodium uh, draw on a whole set of, of, of sources, both architectural and, and documentary. Uh, let me just introduce briefly uh, Henry uh, Yeverly, who is potentially the person who we think is the architect of, of Bodium, um, someone who, who worked on some of the, the most significant buildings, uh, uh, projects of, of late medieval England. <clears throat> Those who want to see this as a, a, a functioning fortification point to the licence to crenellate, uh, which suggests that Bodium is built against the, uh, against the French, so it's part of the defence of, of southern England. Those who wish to contest that uh, point to a whole variety of, of problems with the, the site. The moat, although wide, is only about three foot deep, very easy to, to drain. So it really isn't a, a defensive structure at all. The gun ports, and they're early gun ports that are built into the, the gatehouse uh, that you can see here, have very, very narrow lines of, lines of fire. They're too low. Uh, they really wouldn't have, have functioned very well. And then there are the uh, others who look at the, uh, the building and point to the fenestration. If this is a fortification, why are you uh, um, piercing the, the walls with such uh, large, large windows? And uh, the, the, this pendulum uh, of, the, of, of interpretation, uh, what is the, the function of, of Bodium? Um, is, I think, uh, towards the, the conceit, the... the, the um, the dream house of, of, the soldier, uh, of the soldier. Other interpretations have, have looked at the internal arrangement of <clears throat> the apartments and, and chambers in Bodium, and here is an attempt to, to look at access, um, who can get access from where and with what ease through the, through the apartment, apartments in, in, the, in the castle it, itself. And again, these are suggesting that this is a, a lived-in space. Indeed, other, some of you may have, have heard papers uh, this morning uh, on that subject. <clears throat> I want to, to, to look at Bodium in the, the wider landscape, and this has been made possible by Royal Commission surveys and recent work uh, by the University of Southampton and Matthew Johnson from, uh, from Northwestern University in the, in the States. Uh, we're getting a much better understanding of how Bodium sits in the, in the landscape. But I want to do it through a, pe a peculiar source. It's slightly anachronistic. I've, I've gone up two centuries. Bodium was, was built in 1385. Well, that's the license to crenellate anyway. Uh, and to this description of the ideal um, landscape for, for, a, for a house. And what's interesting, of course, here is that our author, Conrad uh, Herisbach, is drawing upon uh, Roman agronomists, so Cato and Varro and Columella, uh, and drawing on the ideas then that have uh, potentially been, been part of the vocabulary of landscape uh, design uh, across the, the Middle Ages. And I want to pick out some, some choice uh, phrases. Uh, Conrad tells us that uh, the building should be at the bottom of the hill, and indeed Bodium is. Um, we have a, what is interpreted as a viewing platform at the north, and the land uh, um, <clears throat> descends to the, uh, to, the, to the building itself. The building should look uh, directly south. Uh, notice how beautifully Bodium is orientated north, south, east, west. Some part of its landscape uh, champion, open, that is the area around the, uh, the, 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 the castle as, as we can interpret it, some of it hilly. We've already mentioned the uh, uh, hill, lying east to south, well watered, well we've got the moat, and wooded. Uh, there, there's uh, environmental evidence of, of woodland in this, in this landscape, not far from some haven, and a navigable river. Here is the river Robber, and we've got archaeological evidence for a haven, a hive, um, uh, near <coughs> the, the, the mill pond. All these elements then can be found in, in Bodium. Conrad goes on and also describes uh, the internal arrangement of his 
sort of uh, his perfect house. All the windows, for the most part, open east, and some, uh, some to the north, but very few to the west. Well, if you look at the fenestration of Bodium, the majority of the windows are in the eastern range. Uh, and I don't know whether you can pick up, but there are very, very few along the western range here uh, at all. Uh, except for galleries uh, and chambers southwards, where I dine and sup to receive sun in the winter abundantly and in summer very little. Uh, well, uh, to the south we, we have the fenestration too. So uh, what is this potentially all telling us in, if we're going to take an elemental reading? Well, we've got this beautiful orientation and, and it lends itself, I think, to thinking about Bodium in this kind of way. I've reorientated it east at the top of the map. That's, you know, tops of maps should always have east at the top. Not north, um, and all medieval maps should be drawn in this kind of way. Uh, let's look at then these associations, these elemental associations with each of these. We've got Eastern Sprig, uh, Air and Sanguinity in the private apartments of the Lord, the Dallaring Ridges, uh, who built the castle. The South Summer, uh, the Great Hall and the services. Uh, to the West, this is where the retainers are, and this is where the storerooms are. Where do you store things? Uh, places that are cold and dry, uh, perfect conditions. So it strikes me that if an elemental reading is taken of Bodium, that again is uh, uh, more grist to those who are arguing that this has actually been a, been a very carefully constructed uh, site um, uh, that is, is residential and certainly symbolic, uh, but not defensive. Well, Bodium is, is really very well known. Uh, less well known, perhaps, is uh, another building. How many minutes have I got to, to talk about? Uh, and this is Longthorpe Tower, which is now uh, incongruously in a suburb of, of Peterborough. <coughs> it's between sort of 1970s houses now, hidden away. I don't know how many of you have, have visited Longthorpe. It's a tower house. The tower here is early 14th century, uh, added onto an earlier building. <laughs> the building was owned by the Thorpe family, who at this particular period were stewards of Peterborough uh, Abbey. <clears throat> and it's a little gem. Within the, uh, the, the tower on the first floor, we have this uh, richly decorated uh, chamber, only about five metres by, by five metres. But this is the, the single best survival of medi late medieval wall painting in a secular context that we can, can draw upon. So the, 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 the walls are covered uh, in, in iconography uh, and scenes. They're kind of complicated. Uh, there's a lot going on uh, here. Uh, so, for example, on the, uh, the north wall, we have the 12 uh, apostles. Uh, we have uh, the nativity scene. Uh, and here we have the seven ages of, of man, all depicted together. Uh, this is probably the most famous of the wall paintings at, at, uh, at, at Longthorpe on the east wall, this wonderful uh, wheel here, the wheel of the, of the senses. Uh, so we have uh, the spider representing touch, and we have the ball representing hearing, uh, we have the cockerel representing sight, we have the monkey representing uh, taste and we have the, um, the vulture representing smell. On the south wall, um, an interesting scene up, up at the top here, um, royal uh, her heraldry um, and, and, and crown figures, some meeting of royalty and an other figure uh, not entirely understood. And on the west wall here, uh, we have a teaching scene looks like one of the great philosophers, one might even say uh, Plato or Aristotle, uh, uh, in, the, in the middle of the arch, that is St. Anthony, one of the, the church fathers, one of the desert fathers, and above that, although it, it's, it's not very easy to see, uh, they are the labours of the, the months, okay, the 12 labours of the months, January, the man warming his hands down here, February, March, April, and then we lose it. So we've got this mixture of uh, secular and uh, religious themes. Uh, they are themes that are being drawn from uh, encyclopedic works. Um, if we go back just uh, to, the, to the south wall, um, here's the backside of a bonicon, 
Uh, you'll know about the Bonacon. Uh, it escapes from its hunters by uh, throwing shit over uh, vast acreages, <laughs> according to the medieval bestiaries and according to, to Pliny uh, and, and other authorities. So what's going on here, and what is elemental about it? Well, the elements, uh, you have to, you have to un, uh, you, they're buried. Uh, they're not presented uh, overtly. But the ceiling here is split into to four elements, um, and four, four segments. We have musicians here. Uh, they're representing, representing, of course, the cosmos, uh, the notion that the, the harmony of the spheres that is a, a medieval idea. But we also have here the uh, symbols of the four evangelists. And the four evangelists uh, have elemental associations. If you follow it astrologically, um, then the, uh, the zodiacal associations with the uh, evangelists uh, gives us uh, various uh, elemental associations. I don't want to spend too long on those because there's another way of thinking about these uh, evangelists and that's through their tetramorphs, uh, the symbols that are used. So Matthew is, is uh, represented as a man, the water bearer, Mark the lion, Luke the ox and John the eagle. And it's only in this representation that you get op the opposition of John and Luke, earth and air, uh, that would fit how they are represented on the uh, on on the on the ceiling. The problem comes from the fact that John is associated with the north, but John Eagle should go with air, which should go to the east. You follow me? <laughs> uh, now Longthorpe Tower is is not very well orientated, and those thinking about this space could quite easily have thought in these terms, uh, that north actually is in, in the corners, that neither, none of the walls are actually orientated to any particular uh, cardinal point. If that's the case, then usefully, medieval, some medieval roti showing the four elements deal with this, this problem in a particular way. Here, unlike the roti that I've drawn, where I've got a direct association between a cardinal point and uh, an element, uh, it's pushed 45 degrees. So north here on this map uh, doesn't equate to, to air. Air is put between north and east. Are you following me? Because if you are, I don't want to do that, then what happens is that we have here, instead of what we know as the north wall, what must have been conceptualised as the east wall and everything works. And what's wonderful, <laughs> it does, it really does work. Because this is what happens with the, the scheme when you look uh, at it. In the east now, what was originally the north, we have the nativity scene, we have infancy. On uh, the, uh, the south wall, we have that scene of a youth um, hunting, we have uh, the, the senses. When do people become reasonable and rational at this point? Uh, infants are not rational beings, but at adole adolescence they are. We have uh, opposite then maturity, ruling, uh, authority that comes with, with middle age. I quite like middle age. <laughs> uh, and then what do we have? Uh, in, for finally, we have uh, wisdom, philosophy, sagacity, uh, old age. You can start to read then this whole space uh, in terms of the, the, the human life cycle. But it all requires a little bit of reorientation. I've finished. <laughs> <laughs>